How you going guys? Curtis from Cutting Edge Engineering. So today's job we have an 815 compactor blade in to have a wear skin put on it. What an 815 is used for, they are used for spreading material and compacting it at the same time. So a lot of people treat them like they are a bulldozer, but they are not. They are a very light duty machine for pushing out loose material and then compacting it. And they can then do that in layers to build up the ground on a job site in order to build infrastructure and stuff like that. A lot of the material they are pushing is generally dirt and rock. So what we have here is we have a lot of wear on the left hand side of the blade, which must be the side that the operator prefers to use. That side has actually worn a hole through it and the other side is getting very thin. So rather than let it get any worse, we're gonna put a new skin on top. The skin is a high tensile plate. It is a wear plate. It should outlast the machine. So we're gonna start on the blade by removing the cutting edges and getting our skin cut to size. He's gone in the shed. Go on, come here. Come on, we're outside today. Come on. Hey, over here. George. Poor George. The birds that are giving George a really hard time, they are willy wagtails. So they are what we consider the chihuahua of the bird family. They're very angry, even though they're very small. So the reason that little bird was giving George such a hard time about being in here is he was very close to a nest here that these other little birds have. So there are eggs in there. This is where they nest every year. Righto, so we have our new skin that we had pressed up in order to go on the 815's blade. The issue we have sometimes is not all the blades are made exactly the same. So the profiles we have in our system for what shape the blade should be and how the blades come to us sometimes can be different. So this template I have in my hand, we sent with our piece of material to have it pressed. 
Well, it doesn't match this blade, but it matched the last one I did perfectly. So as you can see, there is a 10 mil gap underneath our template. It's not from where because the original skins aren't that thick. It's just one of those things that depends where it was built in the world will depend on what sort of uh, quality control it went through. What we're gonna do about it, I will end up dogging the center of the blade skin down onto the original skin. So we can do that using chains and a jack or a quarter power, and we'll be able to then make the new skin take the shape of the blade. We don't wanna have any voids in behind the blade because that will then encourage cracking if they are to run into a rock it will try and stretch the skin so rather than have any issues we're just going to dog it down so the wear plate fits the blade so i do have to cut this skin down to size i do have to cut what's known as the green off the skin when we order the material we order it 200 mil oversized in height and that is so the pressing company can then press it all the way to the edge of where the skin needs to be so that material will be cut off and discarded we're gonna get on to cutting that off now. Oh yeah, Jeffrey. Jeffrey. Come here. What's this? So that's Jeffrey the magpie. He started coming into the workshop when George started coming in. It's just gone spring here, so all the birds are back out again. Oh, right, George. oh George too. Hey George. mate, he's getting picked on again.
So I'm just going to cut some plug holes through the centre of the blade skin. Because the profile is not exactly the same, I'll be able to press the skin into place and then weld down the centre. Picking on you. So, one thing to remember when you're using your mobile elevating workbench forklift. Don't cut through your tines. I watched an apprentice cut a tine in half because he wasn't aware of where the tine was under the job. So make sure your tines are out of the way. Right, oh, now that we've got the skin sitting on the blade, we can actually see how bad things really are. So the blade does have a bend in it. After I cut the skin, it did bend the opposite way. It's just one of those things. We just need to dog everything down evenly so everything can then fall back into its place and then we can weld it out. So to tack the skin on, what I'm going to be using is my LN25 Pro wire feeder and that is attached to my DC400 power source. That is a really good suited machine for our outdoor welding area. Because I've got that set up outside, I can leave my two workshop welders in the workshop. The wire we're going to be using to weld the new skin onto the blade is a CIG VertiCore wire. It is the same classification as our Hobart XL525 we usually use. The gas we're going to be using is Argo Shield Heavy, which is 80% argon, 20% CO2.
To help pull the center of the skin down to the blade, I am gonna be using a chain and a jack. This bottle jack is rated at 30 ton and the chain is rated at 10. In some circumstances, this could be potentially dangerous. If you are to hook them up incorrectly, they could get loose and something could happen. In this case, I'm only applying a couple of ton of pressure just to get the skin down onto the blade I will tack it in place. I can then remove the jack and the chain. So you just need to be aware of what can happen so you can avoid something going wrong. Righto guys, so we've got the skin all tacked on. It was a bit of a fight to get everything down, but we did manage to do it. The wind has picked up a lot here and it is forecast to rain. Rather than try and fight the wind and the weather outside, I'm gonna take the blade into the shed so then I can finish welding it out. The weather conditions here in Queensland are one of the reasons why I don't do field work anymore because the weather dictates when you work. So if we get a week's worth of rain, we don't work for the week. This is why I put so much effort into building up my workshop. I could weld this outside using electrodes, but that is just far too slow. Gasless, I don't actually carry gasless because we don't use it. Trying to weld with dual shield in wind like this is just, you're fighting a losing battle. So we're just gonna take it into the workshop and finish it in there. This is bird mince, this is not homie mince.
Righto, so we've got the top of the blade skin completely welded out now. I do need to take it outside and flip it over in order to weld the sides of the blade skin on. But before I do that, I'm going to put some hard facing along the ridge of the weld on the bottom side of the blade. The weld that I've just put there is the softest material. It's going to be the first thing to wear out. So to avoid that wearing out and material getting under the blade skin and lifting it off the blade, I'm going to put a strip of hard facing across there. So in the wire I'm going to be using is Studi 965G, so that is a gas fed hard facing wire. And we'll be using a Argo Shield metal core, which is a 90% argon, 10% CO2 gas mix. So let's get into that. So you might notice there is quite a big gap on the left hand side of this blade. The reason for that is this is where the most wear was on the blade. We can't shape the skin to fill in that void, so all we can do with that is weld it up. So there is a bit of a gap there, but nothing we can't fill. Oh, so that's pretty typical. I've got one weld to go and I run out of wire. That's all right, I've got enough on this one to finish that job off.
Righto guys, so all the welding is now complete. I've refitted the cutting edges. A few of the bolts didn't survive, but I had a couple of spares, so everything's done. We're ready to send it back to our customer. Thanks for watching. How you going guys? <laughs> hey, just want to do stuff, bugger off. This is going to be a problem. George, you got to leave. We're trying to video. <laughs> you asshole bird. You get him, George. Come on guys, we're trying to video. Oh, they're so mean. Come here, George. Come down here. We're just going to dog it down so everything's nice. Um, fuck. There. Oh. So. So. Oh, fuck. So. Yeah. Righto, guys. So we've. Oh, wait. What am I saying? I don't know. Right. Someone should cut that. <laughs> fucking. Fuck me. Fucking safety switch is gone again. So the plasma keeps tripping out the breaker over in the electrical box and the reason for that is this side of the workshop doesn't have any 15 amp outlets on it so it's only running off a 10 amp system. When we do finally get power over here we will put a 15 amp circuit in so we can use our plasma without having to go and turn everything back on again every time it trips it out. They are the chihuahuas of the bird. <laughs> We've now become Animal Planet. I'm Curtis Attenborough of Australia. So the other day when I was supposed to be working, I was watching two of those take on the Australian frill neck lizard. We do have a pretty big variety of birds in our yard. We have magpies, we have the willy wagtails, we have butcher birds, the peewee birds, and we have the great Australian white ibis also known as the bin chicken or a bin bird. They are very majestic and they would have to be the most hideous bird in Australia. <laughs> there are millions of them around here. They're just ugly. They're down the oh, there it is, there's one. There comes one now. Majestic Look bin chicken. Look at that majestic piece of shit. <laughs> that was perfect. <laughs> Come to me, my pretties. Curtis the Disney princess. <laughs> No, this is George's food. George and Jeffrey. They're hungry. No. He's like, aww. I never get anything now.